Tonight and every Sunday night at this time, the Columbia Broadcasting System presents the Mercury Theater in a special series of broadcasts about the other Americas. Hello, Americans. This is Orson Welles. Last week we began, and this week we continue with our ABCs of the Caribbean, the alphabet of the islands. Well, we left off on C. C is for cockfight and casino and cricket, all contests. C is for cashew, coconuts, and cayenne. The first two are nuts. The cashew is deadly poison until it's roasted. Thank you. Some oleomargarine comes from copra, which comes from coconuts. Those of you who didn't know that oleomargarine is a substitute for butter, found it out since the war started. Cayenne is pepper from the place of the same name. C is also for coffee. One pound every five weeks. C is for cocoa as well, which is what most of you are drinking these mornings, if you can get the cocoa, and if you can get the milk, and if you can get the sugar, and if you like cocoa. C is for Castaway and for Crusoe, Robinson Crusoe, the world's best-remembered castaway who was supposed to be wrecked on the island of Tobago. There's a gorgeous road winding through the palmy scenery of Tobago, and the road is not called Tobago Road. Thank you again, madam. That's interesting information, isn't it? That's my department. Remember interesting information? I'm sure we can use it, too. Now let's continue with our alphabet. C is for cooks and cooking. And in our West Indian alphabet, Creole cooking, which comes to us from the islands via New Orleans. C is for cannibals, who are also cooks of a sort. And for the Carib Indians, who used to be cannibals. Here's what an old document has to say on the subject. The Caribs have eaten the flesh of all nations, and they affirm that the white man is unpalatable, being far too salty. The Spanish is stringy and tough, and the flesh of the French is the tenderest. The Caribbean is named for the Caribs. Next slide, please. Here we have a Calypso singer. Uh, next several calypso singers singing calypso at carnival time on the island of trinidad uh, mr wells uh, what is calypso well, don't you know that's interesting information the only way you can find out anything is to ask that's right let's ask a calypso singer the lancelot calypso is music that goes all the way back to the slave days after emancipation when the slaves were free we really had something to sing about and new things to make songs over calypso is about everything love Politics, current events, the government, and love. All people, all occasions. I have written a song for tonight. I will sing it. Oh, well, please do, Sir Lancelot. First, I will recite it. Sometimes those who do not know Calypso have trouble understanding the words. Trinidad, beautiful land of Aire, land of sunshine and fragrant air, and lovely maidens beyond compare. Believe me, friends, that's the place to be in this magic island across the sea. It's a land where you find youth and beauty. It's in Trinidad, the beautiful land of Ivy. Gorgeous flowers blooming everywhere. Calypso singers to bring you cheer. No wonder everyone wants to go to this happy home of the Calypso. The beautiful land of Ivory. We mean to fight for freedom and democracy. With our friendly neighbors in Yankee land, Trinidadians will firmly stand till every last one of tyranny is blown to hell for eternity. Beware, ye evil men of tyranny. We stand arrayed, the champions of democracy. Brazil, Mexico, Haiti, and Cuba, North, South, and Central America. We're going to conquer, you never fear. You won't pollute our hemisphere. <laughs> Let us hail the 
good neighbor policy. Father Joy, it has brought humanity. Brothers clasping each other's hands, Americans now united stand in justice, honor, and liberty. This is the hope of this century. Here are some other titles on the Calypso hit parade. When Roosevelt came to the land of the hummingbird, shouts of welcome and joy were heard. Uh, if there's a thing that gets me vexed, it's to hear a woman called the weaker sex. If you want to live a happy life, be sure and marry an ugly wife. The Republican opposition couldn't affect the American election. The uh, Calypsonians themselves have wonderful professional names, such as the Iron Tooth, Attila the Hun, the Lion, Mighty Destroyer, King Radio, the Lord Executioner, the Growler, and Sir Lancelot, who was with us this evening. Our last word for the letter C is a difficult word. It comes from France. Women strive for it. The word is chic. My vote for the great chic of the Americas goes to the traditional costume of Martinique, First Empire a la Creole. You might mention clothes, Mr. Wells. See for clothes, what? In Trinidad, you know, it's possible to have a fine English suit built between sunrise and sunset at half the cost the cost you pay up north. And cocktails. You ought to taste the cocktails in the islands. A Bacardi or a Daiquiri. Daiquiri starts with V. Oh, C is for Cuba. Daiquiris were invented in Cuba. <laughs> yes, and they still make it better there than anywhere else. Remember El Florida? <laughs> I sure do. Anyway, I think it's time we got into the D's. D is for drinks. Can you name some more Caribbean drinks? Mm, Cuba Libra. That's Bacardi and Coca-Cola. Planter's Punch. You need a swizzle stick for that. Oh, lots of different punches. And there's uh, Cana and Clarine and Aguardiente. They're all made out of molasses. Low cost and high voltage. Thanks. D is for the Dutch and for Denmark. We bought our part of the Virgin Islands from Denmark. Twenty-five million dollars. D is for durian, a fruit that smells like cheese and tastes like heaven. D is for dances and drums. D is for dictators and despots and democracy. D is for desolines, the tiger of the Haitian Revolution. D is for Dominica of the Dominican Republics. On one end of Dominica is the last settlement of the Caribs. Who used to raid the Caribbean they gave their name to. The Caribs were just as tough and as dangerous as the pirates. They rowed out in war canoes long enough to hold a hundred men. Wouldn't take many war canoes to hold the Caribs now. D is for death. In the time of Columbus, some of the Indians believed that white men were immortal because white men said they were immortal. There was only one way of disproving it, and a few Indians skeptically held a conquistador underwater for a quarter of an hour or so and brought up a dead Spaniard. They gave him every chance, but after three days in the tropics, the proof was fairly conclusive. A lot of white men died after that. E? E is for earthquakes and executions. E is for easy living and exploitation and education. E is for equality and for emeralds, for emancipation. After emancipation comes the East Indians. Historically, that's when the East Indians came after emancipation. The British needed more laborers in Trinidad, so the real Indians, the ones Columbus was looking for, were brought from the Orient to the Caribbean on a system of indenture. Today, in Trinidad, an island off the north coast of South America, there are about 100,000 Hindus and Muslims, and lots of them still wear their robes and turbans. E is for Captain Jenkins' ear. And for this story, we take you to the House of Commons in the year 1739. Gentlemen of the House, the Spanish Gardia Calesta stopped the vessel of a gallant English sailor, Captain Jenkins, while he was peacefully trading off the Spanish mate. His ship was confiscated and himself brutally maltreated. Gentlemen, the bloody Spanish ruthlessly severed his ear from his head. Unbelievable. Fortunately, 
Captain Jenkins had the presence of mind to reclaim it. Here it is. It is none other that I hold here in this bottle, preserved for posterity in good Jamaica rum. Captain Jenkins here. There were those who doubted the exhibit. That an ear was in the bottle could not be questioned, and Captain Jenkins was an Englishman. And he was short an ear. After a lot of excitement, war was declared on June 15, 1739. It is known to history as the War of Jenkins' Ear. F is for Fair de Lance, the deadliest of all the serpents. They tell the story that some planters on islands where no Fair de Lance existed imported the snake for the purpose of terrorizing the Negroes and keeping runaways out of the jungle. G. G is for the Guinea coast and the Gulf coast and the Golden Hind, the Grenadine Islands, and the island of Gorda. G is for ghosts and for ghost stories. The West Indies are full of both. In the late 1700s, the Honorable Thomas Chase of Barbados ordered a tomb to be built for the Chase family. A tomb, 12 feet long, 6 feet wide. Let it be sealed with an enormous slab of blue Devonshire marble brought from England. There, let me and my descendants rest. Two of the Chase family died and were placed in a vault. Then one Dorcas Chase died. When the vault was opened, the two other coffins were upside down and completely misplaced in the tomb. Vandals! Ghouls! But how could anyone have gotten in? Impossible! Four more years, and old Chase himself went to his reward. The great blue marble stone was pushed away from the door by powerful slaves. Then, the door lay open, and light fell into the tomb. Zombies. Let me away. Zombies. 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 Again, all the coffins had been thrown about in disorder. Again, and again, with each new internment, the heavy old coffins were found in scattered confusion as if by the caprice of the devil himself, was impossible. Yet there it was. The governor of Barbados himself interceded. Sand the floor of the vault. Secure the door with cement. Seal it with my official seal. And then we shall see. Ghosts. Jumbies. Nonsense. Nonsense. Ten months later, the temptation was too much. The governor, a rational, educated man, called together a party of friends. They got out the rector of the church. They brought ten strong slaves with them to move the immense stones. The seals were examined, found intact, and then broken. All right, men. Ten of you ought to be able to move in. Ah, but no. Pushing, pulling, exerting every ounce of their huge combined strength, the stone was not to be moved. Boss... She stone just stuck like she was growing in ground. Can't move, she know how. The gentleman of the party pitched in. And at last, the ponderous stone moved. The tomb lay open once more. The men, white and black alike, froze. Their eyes widened with nameless fear. Clammy dew broke out on forehead and palm, for no wonder. No wonder that the door could scarcely be moved. Someone, something, from inside, it had to be from inside, had leaned two of the ponderous leaden coffins against the door. Coffins that a dozen men could hardly move. Who done it? What about it, Ellery Queen? What about it, Fadiman? Mr. Anthony, any solutions? 
Neither have I. G is for gold. Gold is the name of the first hundred years of the white man's history in America. Where are the Indians of the Caribbean? The Arawaks, the Caribs, the Lucayos. Except for the accident of a few survivors, all are gone. They were murdered by the white men for their gold. When the Spaniards came to Cuba, Hathaway, cacique of the Arawaks, called his people together. Before them, he placed a calabash filled with gold. And he spoke to them. People of Arawak, this is the god of our enemies. His name is Gold. They seek him out every place. And where they find him, they remain. If gold were hidden in the holes of the rocks, they would discover him. If we were to swallow him, they would place their hands in our stomachs and drag him out. Let us cast him into the sea. Perhaps when he is no longer among us, we will be forgotten by them. H. H is for hurricanes. H is for Haiti, for Honduras and Hog Island, and for Havana, the gayest city in America. I is for imperialism, intolerance, and independence for isolation and invasion, but also for Indigo and Isabella. J. J is for Jamaica and Jamaica Ginger and Jake Leg if the drink is bad. J is for justice and jails. And J is for Jumbies. Or Maljo. After Maldorco. Which is the evil eye. Jumbie, plant harsh beans along your fence if you want to keep the Jumbies away. The jumbies won't get you if you wear a piece of rope from the neck of a hanged man. There are many items in the jumbie rule book. If you want to see a jumbie, for example, this is what the witch doctor prescribes. Take the humor from the eye of a white hoss. A white hoss. And put it in your eye. Then you can see jumbies. And remember... Never call anyone's name aloud when he is not present, or the dead will repeat it until that person is no more. Hmm. Never call anyone's name aloud when he's not present, or the dead will repeat it until that person is no more. Hmm. Adolf! Adolf! Well, so much for the J's. Now for the K's. Uh, Key West. Key West and all the keys in the K's. Keys are little coral reefs, or big ones. Thank you. And K is for Kingston, the principal port of Jamaica, which used to be a suburb of Port Royal. Port Royal was a wicked city, and it came to a bad end. On June 7, 1692, Port Royal was shattered by a terrible earthquake. The city slipped beneath the waves. They do say that the sunken church bells still ring for the movement of the tides. Kingston is no longer a suburb of Port Royal. Thank you. L is for L'Overture, Toussaint L'Overture, the Negro who won freedom for Haiti. L is for Liberty. Liberty is pronounced liberté in Haiti and Martinique, libertad in the islands that still keep the Spanish tongue. It means the same thing in all languages. L is for languages. In the islands, there's a wide variety of languages. Spanish. Chinese. Hindustani. Dutch. French. Many forms and dialects. And papiamento, the queerest language in the world. A great deal of English is spoken in the West Indies. Oh, yes, sir. We speak considerable uh, English. English? 
You'll hear as much English as anything else. Naturally. Hell is for lizards and lightning bugs. They come very big in the islands. Caribbean lightning bugs don't even blink. They often end up in little bamboo cages, doing excellent service as lamps. You can actually read by them. M is for the moon, by whose full light in the tropics you can read a poem from a printed page or a lie in a woman's eyes. M is for money, merchandise, and markets, for melons, molasses, macaws, monkeys. M is for Martinique. M is for the Monroe Doctrine. N is for Nassau. N is for the new world, for new hopes, new ideals, for anything new. O is for oil, the plasma of commerce, the black blood in the arteries of war machines. A lot of oil around the Caribbean. And O is for orchids, which grow there on every other tree. P is for Panama. P is for pistols and pieces of eight. A piece of eight is a round silver coin about the size of a dollar. It was scored so it could be broken into eight equal segments. These segments were called bits. Which is where we get the term two bits and four bits. Correct. That means a quarter or a half of a piece of eight. Thank you again. P is for plots, politics, and poverty. For plantations and planters. P is for Pan-Americanism the Pan American Airlines. Q is for Quislings. R. R is for a couple of presidents named Roosevelt. First one took his rough riders up San Juan Hill and the second inaugurated the good neighbor policy. R is for rum, the people's cognac. It's made from molasses. Molasses is a byproduct of sugar and rum is a byproduct of civilization. Here's what somebody wrote in 1675. The chief fuddling they make in these islands is rum bullion, also called kill devil. And this is made of sugar canes distilled, a hot, hellish, and terrible liquor. R is for rainbows. The lunar rainbows I've seen at night in the mist over the Caribbean when the full moon is shining. And R is for romance. To have the romance, you must have the rumba. That's right, senor. R is for rumba. The rumba comes from Cuban voodoo and the danson. Uh, West Indian music is like West Indian drinks. Both are sweet and both are dangerous. Both are delightful and they're both mysterious blends. A dozen different rums, as many liqueurs, spices, and tropical fruits. The music, equal parts of African nostalgia, European intrigue and Spanish fire. Exotic, seductive, out of this world. Now we come to S. S is for all the saints in the calendar and for all the islands that are named for the saints. The white man came to the Caribbean to look for gold, but he stayed for sugar. S is for sugar. Unless your great-grandmother was very rich, her family never tasted it. Sugar uh, was then as rare as caviar. Today it's rare enough. Sugar is an important source of alcohol, and alcohol means synthetic rubber and gunpowder. Let's not forget the Southern Cross and sponges. S is for sponges, male and female. The female of the species is more absorbent than the male. S is for siestas and swizzle sticks. S is for the sun. S is for slavery. Slavery is a wickedly important part of the story of our hemisphere. Toward the end of the 18th century, the traffic in slaves was big business throughout the capitals of civilized Europe. My dear Cecil, those silver sconces with the little crystal tears, wherever did you find them, darling? What you really mean is, where did I find the money to buy them? Isn't it, Angel? Well, you're a brute, darling. But how did you manage it? My sweet investment. If you really must know... Black ivory. Black ivory? You mean the slave trade? But, Angel, the profits are fabulous. A wild negro that costs nothing in Africa fetches 200 guineas in America. Well, I have a few idle shillings. Whom shall I see? Well, there are several reliable firms, dear. May I suggest Sir Eustace Fortnum? Thank you, darling. Sir Eustace Fortnum. <laughs> A 
moonless night. The low-flying scud obscures the bright stars over Africa. Four ships lie anchored off the Guinea coast. Men, the black of all village is around the next cove. Remember this. A wound on the moor's body is a wound in your purse. A dead slave is a dead loss. Right, Sir Eustace. Into the boats now, and you blacksmiths see that the chains and shackles be well wrapped in oakum. There bain't nothing like the clanking of a chain to make a wild blackamer take his heels. Lively now, and silent to do it. Look alive, lads! Some of the beggars have spears! Nine of those pistols, fools! Every shot costs near 200 guineas! I had to do him down, sir! He was coming at me with a whacking big knife! That's several blackamores hiding in the net out, sir! Set it ablaze! They'll either come out and submit or stay in and be cooked! <laughs> Here, you smiths, watch that you don't smash their legs when you drive their shackles, huh? Here be a little beggar, Captain. Oh. Just crawled out of the fire. Took a bad singeing he did afore he give up. He ain't going to survive the voyage all burned like this. No, what if his ears burned a bit? He'll still bring in hundred guineas in America. All right, little monkey. Oh, well, yeah. A small leg on for this one's many. Oh, bite me, a little heathen. Hey, bit me, Captain. <laughs> Well, well, the last little beggar under the fire. Last one under the fiery furnace. I shall call him a bedney girl. <laughs> Shadrach, Meshach, and a bedney girl. Look, you lad. You, a bedney girl. Me, master. You? A bedney girl. Yeah. I don't like the curl to his lips, sir. The look in his eye. Oh, nonsense. A taste of the cat will take that out of him. Right, sir. Melkin. Well, that's as far as we have time to go. Next week, we'll continue the story of slavery and of Abednego, the slave. And we'll continue our ABCs of the Caribbean, our alphabet of the islands. Until then, good night, Americans. You have been listening to the fifth in a series of programs about the other Americas in which the Columbia Broadcasting System is presenting Orson Welles and the Mercury Theater. The Columbia Broadcasting System is the originator of South America's network of stations, La Cadena de las Americas. In the Southern Hemisphere as well as in this hemisphere, CBS provides daily programs of news, entertainment, and recreation to bring about a closer understanding among Americans everywhere. Next week, the sixth program in this series will be brought to you by Orson Welles. Mr. Welles has recently returned from an eight-month visit to the Latin American countries for the Office of the Coordinator of Inter-American Affairs. The music tonight was composed and directed by Lud Gluskin. The special Calypso music was composed and sung by Sir Lancelot. Let us hail the good neighbor policy. For the joy it has brought humanity. Brothers clasping each other.